Hello learners and welcome to Constant Learners. In this video, we are discussing data discretization and concept hierarchy generation. Data discretization is a process of minimizing. Okay, that means we are reducing, minimizing or we can say reducing. So what are we doing? We are reducing the large data sets to smaller data sets. So data discretization is a process of minimizing or reducing but what are we reducing reducing the number of values from where from a continuous attribute and how are we doing that by dividing it into intervals okay you don't need to memorize this definition just smart work is enough okay data discretization is a process of reducing or minimizing the number of values. Suppose this is an attribute table. These are the number of values. So we have to reduce these number of values by dividing it into intervals. Okay. So process of minimizing number of values from a continuous attribute by dividing it into intervals is data discretization. Suppose this is an attribute uh, value here 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, suppose I decide to split this data, okay, or reduce this data by dividing it into intervals. So, suppose this is an interval, this is another interval, and this is another interval, and so on. Okay, now when we divide this data into intervals, we replace this complete data by another specific data value. And this specific data value is known as interval label. So here we have values in a continuous attribute which we are dividing into intervals. Okay. And these intervals, the data in these intervals are replaced by some specific data value known as interval labels. I hope this was clear. So what is happening in data discretization? We are dividing the attributes into intervals. Okay. And then we are replacing the original data with interval labels. Okay. And then we get smaller data sets. Okay. And these smaller data sets are better for data mining. Okay. So dividing the attributes into intervals not interval labels and replacing the original data with interval labels which is nothing but some specific data value okay and thus what do we get we get smaller data sets which is useful for data mining now let's see what are the types of data discretization we can divide it into two types one with respect to the class and the other one with respect to the direction of operations performed okay with respect to class, again, it is divided into two types. One is supervised discretization, other one is unsupervised discretization. When we have the class information, we call it supervised discretization. When we do not have the class information, we call it unsupervised discretization. Okay, as simple as that. But with respect to the direction, we have two types again, top-down approach and bottom-up approach. We know what discretization technique is. Okay, so basically it is dividing the attribute. So suppose I am dividing this attribute at this point and here at this point and so on. Okay, I'm dividing. See, this is also going on and the division is also going on. Now here we've got one interval, another interval and third interval. Now this point at which we are performing the splitting, this point is known as split point. Or we can also call it cut point. And this interval, as I told you, the data in this interval is replaced by interval label. Let's call this, suppose, I don't know the value of this data. Let's just call it interval label 1. Okay, this data is replaced by interval label 2. Then this is replaced by interval label 3. So in place of those attributes, now I've got another values then again the splitting is performed suppose now i'm splitting at this point so this complete interval will be replaced by a new interval label let's say interval label a 
Then again, suppose fitting is performed somewhere here and this complete interval will be replaced by another data value. Let's call this interval label B. So what is happening? We are performing recursive splitting. We are performing recursive splitting of the data into intervals. And thus what is happening? The data is reducing in size. Let's take an example. Here I'm writing horizontally, okay? Suppose I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and so on. Suppose I'm splitting at this point, at this point, here, here and so on. Now we are going to replace this data by interval label 1. This data by interval label 2. This by interval label. So we are replacing this data by some other value of data. Again, suppose splitting is performed. And this data will be replaced by another specific data value. This will be replaced by another specific data value. So constant splitting is being performed. Suppose here uh, we are splitting and we are combining this data to give another value. So this is how the data is producing. And we are also getting a tree-like structure. We will discuss this tree uh, further. Now what is bottom-up approach? In bottom-up approach again, See, the split points are considered. Suppose I'm going to split at this point. See, this is split point, right? So again, here I'm going to consider the split point. I'm not splitting the data. Just considering the split point. Suppose I can split these attributes at this point. Suppose I'm splitting these attributes at this point, at this point and so on. So in bottom-up approach, what happens is the data around the split points is merged together. So here the data is not being divided, rather it is getting merged. And this merged data, this complete data after merging is replaced by another specific data value. Let's consider this interval label 1. Then again data neighboring to this split point is merged together and we get another interval label. Let's say 2. Then data again at this split point is merged together and we get another interval label known as Again, we consider a split point. Let's say this is a potential split point. Okay, this is a potential split point. So data neighboring to this split point is merged together and we get another uh, data value. Again, data at this split point is merged together and we get another interval label value. So here merging operation is being performed and the original data is being replaced by some specific value. So here... What are we performing? We are performing recursive merging. Okay, that means merging is performed. Then again, whatever output is uh, received, again, merging is performed on that. Then again, whatever output is received, merging is performed on that. So this is known as recursive or repetitive merging. Again, let's see the example. Suppose I have an attribute 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and so on. Suppose this is a potential split point. This is one. Okay, these are all potential split points. So data around these split points are merged together to get another data value. Then again, merging is performed. Merging, merging and merging. So we've got some data sets. Again, potential split points are considered and the data around those split points are merged together to get another values. So again, you can see that we are getting a tree-like structure. So this tree-like structure that we get uh, by the top-down and bottom-up approach gives rise to another concept known as concept hierarchy. What happens in concept hierarchy? Repetitive splitting or merging of data results into hierarchical partitioning of the actual attribute values. Here what did we see? This actual attribute is resulting into hierarchical partitioning. Okay, so here we're getting hierarchical partitioning of the actual attribute values. Suppose let's take uh, an example of months. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November and December. Suppose I'm performing splitting here. I'm splitting uh, the months. Okay, now suppose... This interval is replaced by another interval label. Let's say quarter 1. This interval is replaced by quarter 2. 
this interval is replaced by quarter 3 this interval is replaced by quarter 4 so what is happening is low level concepts are replaced by high level concepts okay so low level concepts are being replaced by high level concepts in concept hierarchy as you can see here the details are getting lost here we uh, knew exactly which month are we talking about but in quarter one we don't know whether it is january february or march in quarter three we don't know whether it's july august or september we don't know what we are talking about so details are lost but then the data is getting reduced which is better for data mining until and unless there is no loss of data the data mining can be efficiently performed so concept hierarchy eliminates the details of the data that means what are we doing we are generalizing the data but this generalization of data is good for data mining because in data mining machines cannot interpret large data sets properly let's go ahead and uh, discuss the discretization and concept hierarchy for numeric data okay now numeric data is very very vast so there are some processes that we need to use for discretization and concept hierarchy generation of numeric data the first method of doing that is binning now binning we have already discussed uh, in the previous video uh, where we discussed data cleaning binning is a process where the continuous data is sorted that is arranged in some format okay and then that segment of data is replaced by the mean value this application is performed recursively then what happens we get hierarchy concept hierarchy here okay and this is unsupervised uh, uh, way of data discretization that means it does not use the class information then in histogram analysis also we are uh, performing unsupervised operation unsupervised discretization that means it is not using class information okay and we know that histograms look something like this so the output is very efficient and the data is much properly reduced also um, in data discretization we replace the uh, we when we divide the data we call it intervals okay we divide the data into intervals here in histogram analysis when the attribute values are divided uh, into disjoint ranges we call it buckets clusters also we have discussed in the previous video in clusters what happens similar sets of data are brought together so here in the continuous attribute values similar kind of data is brought together okay that means clustering is performed and that is how the data is divided into uh, smaller values or uh, the data is reduced and discretization is performed i hope uh, this concept of data discretization and concept hierarchy was clear to you if you have any doubts you know that you can always write them down to me in the comment section below or you can also message me on instagram i will make sure to respond to you and if you like the video please give it a thumbs up share it with as many people as you can you never know who can benefit from it. And thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel for more such amazing content.